And that's when I said to myself, I think I said out loud, I think I've been shot. A shooter opened fire on his bus full of people in Seattle. Now this hero driver is telling us how it all went down. Tracking some showers that have popped up late this afternoon. I'll tell you what to expect for the weekend. That part of your forecast coming up next. After fighting past the Sweet 16, Gonzaga now headed to the Elite Eight. Yeah, we are live from Anaheim introducing you to a future member of the team. Well, welcome everyone. It's good to have you with us. I'm Jane McCarthy. And I'm Tom Sherry, a Spokane Middle School student is hospitalized with bacterial meningitis. Now this is rare, but potentially a life threatening disease. The girl is a student at Sacagawea Middle School. Health district staff say they've contacted people who may have had contact with her to recommend they take antibiotics. Crime 2's Alexa Block has more about the disease and how to prevent it from spreading. Health officials say there have not been other cases like this identified and there's a very low risk of this disease spreading right now, but there are a few things that parents should know moving forward. Meningitis is a disease caused by swelling in the brain and spinal cord. The two well-known causes of that swelling are from a virus or bacteria. Rates of the disease are highest in children younger than one, followed by teens. Viral meningitis is the less severe of the two, according to the CDC. It's also the most common. Most people get better on their own without treatment. Bacterial meningitis can be much more serious and can even be deadly. There's a number of different types of bacteria that can cross um, from the blood, bloodstream into the, into the brain and, and can cause some uh, inflammation in in the brain and that's what causes a lot of the symptoms. That inflammation can eventually lead to paralysis, cognitive defects and the loss of limbs. Bacterial meningitis can be spread through saliva, but health officials say the disease doesn't spread very efficiently, so it's difficult to catch. However, there are a few different types of the bacteria that cause it and about 5 to 10 percent of people carry the bacteria. Uh, vaccination is really the best prevention with that because it's not very easily transmitted person to person and it's not very predictable in terms of who's going to get sick or who's not. Health officials recommend vaccination. Parents can also talk to their kids about not sharing drinks, food and chapstick, any way to cut down on sharing saliva. Parents should also look for a combination of symptoms, high fever, severe headache, neck pain and a rash. If parents notice these symptoms, they should reach out to their pediatrician. The CDC recommends that preteens are vaccinated at age 11 to 12 and then get a booster shot at 16 years old. Alexa Block, Crime 2 News. In other news today, the suspected gunman in that deadly North Seattle shooting made his first appearance in court. 33 year old Tad Norman is charged with first degree murder, assault and robbery. He's accused of first shooting a school teacher in her vehicle before firing at a Metro bus and then hitting the driver. Then police say he carjacked another driver and crashed into a bystander in a car killing both men. Commuters are thankful for Eric Stark. He's the bus driver who managed to drive 12 passengers to safety and call for help even after he was shot. And we got to hear from him for the first time just over an hour ago. Creme News Whitney Ward is in the newsroom with more on his condition now. Whitney? Well, Seattle police are making it very clear that Eric Stark is in fact a hero. And after you hear what he did to protect his bus passengers, you will likely think that too. This is how he describes those moments leading up to the shooting. I saw somebody who looked like they were running for the bus stop. A guy was running and uh, he tripped and fell and just face planted the pavement. And I just thought, oh no, the guy's probably hurt. I'm probably going to have to call, you know, he's probably going to need medical attention. He hit the ground hard. Um, and so I kind of stopped a little bit. He, I saw him roll over onto his back and his arm was out to the side and I'm like, is that a gun in his hand? And looked like he had a looked like he had a Glock in his hand. So I thought, what's going on here? He stood up, and this is the surreal part. He stood up, and um, like very calmly, he stood up. He got into uh, I know a little bit about shooting. He got into like a weaver stance, a shooting stance, and very calmly like took aim. And then I heard the report of the gun and saw the glass come through the windshield and felt the bullet hit me. Uh, and that's when I said to myself, I think I said out loud, I think I've been shot. 
Wow, Eric said he hid behind the metal box where people pay and then hit the emergency call button for help. And then he slammed the bus into reverse to get away from the shooter. He says any other bus driver would have done the same thing. Even so, he says one of the passengers that he saved even called him yesterday in the hospital just to say thank you. There's also been a GoFundMe page set up for him and for his family. All you have to do is search Eric Stark. Jane, Tom. Wow. Amazing, amazing the way he thought under that Gosh. extreme pressure. He's Goodness. a hero. Yeah. Well, taking a turn to weather now, the weekend upon us, and things are looking pretty good, right? I know we've got some showers that have kind of popped up right now. We're getting a little light rain in Spokane, but after the sun sets, it will all go away, and we'll be headed for really just a delightful weekend with uh, plenty of sunshine expected on your Saturday. There's a look at the Doppler radar again. Most of these showers are convective, meaning they're kind of being forced up as, uh, as we get this daytime heating, but once the sun sets, things will be uh, uh, much quieter and drier, but you can see those showers just now moving through uh, kind of south of I-90 and the Spokane area. 55 degrees, that's the current temperature. Winds out of the north-northeast at 10 miles an hour. As you can see, when we take a look at your weekend weather, 57 the high tomorrow with sunny skies, 58 and a few more clouds rolling in on Sunday. It gets wet for most of next week with above average temperatures. This is pretty much uh, from April 4th through April 8th. So we're really looking as we go into the following weekend. And as you can see, temperature-wise, above average across areas of eastern Washington and northern Idaho. And then you're saying, what about precipitation, Tom, through late next week? And that's it. You can see above average precip on the way. I'll spell it all out in detail with your seven-day forecast in a few minutes. Looking forward to that. Thanks, Tom. Also, Gonzaga celebrating their Sweet 16 win. The team tweeting out their locker room <laughs> celebrations. And that does include Mark Few's signature handstand. You see they're getting ready there for him to... Uh, yeah, oh, look at the assist by the team there. I love that. <laughs> Didn't last long, but we'll call it a 10. They are now too. getting ready to play three-seated Texas Tech in the Elite Eight. And tomorrow's game is in Anaheim, California. You can watch it on TBS at 3.09 in the afternoon. And that's T as in TBS, T as in Tom. That's right, T Let as me, in Tom. Because some people think we're saying CBS. Yeah, but it's TBS. Tom. TBS. Tom BS. Oh! oh. You've seen That's it nightly, That's not what I folks. meant. <laughs> You've seen it nightly, Monday <laughs> through Friday. Uh, our Creme 2 sports team has been doing an outstanding job bringing us coverage of Gonzaga as they advance to the Elite Eight, and no doubt they have been enjoying Anaheim's sunny and warm weather as well. Indeed, they're working hard. Sports director Brenna Green joins us now from the Honda Center as Gonzaga is taking time to talk with the media this afternoon. Brenna. Yeah, Gonzaga hasn't spoken to the media yet today, so we'll show you that tonight at 10 and 11. But right now we're going to focus on the next generation of Zags. Just an hour or so down the road, Gonzaga 2020 verbal commit Dominic Harris Temecula just waiting for the moment he gets to put on a Gonzaga jersey. I think it's a beautiful thing just when, you're, when your brother falls in love with his dream. High school junior point guard Dominic Harris definitely fell in love with Gonzaga. I feel like it was the best fit for me, um, for what I wanted to do as far as basketball and, and just life, uh, being a leader and just being a young man. I feel like I can flourish there in the offense and just everything that they do. And I feel like it was just a good fit for me in my overall game. And his family? Well, it seems they're in love with it too. I think finding a great school for him that is consistent and uh, family-like really fits our family. For him to come back to say, uh, you know, I love it, it felt like family. So that's, that's I mean, that's as most comforting as you could get. It's, it's, it's fantastic. It's family. When we went there, the love that you feel from the moment you step into the gym. As a parent, you want your child to go to a place that symbolizes home and that is home. Dominic and his family loved Gonzaga so much that he verbally committed to the school midway through his sophomore year, which is extremely rare. But Dominic, well, he found something rare in the Bulldogs. I feel like when you know where you want to go, um, you shouldn't have to wait. Uh, most people wait their senior year and stuff. So I feel like if I, I knew I wanted to go there, so I just pulled the sugar on it. Expect a lot of pulling the trigger when Dominic lands on campus in 2020 because the kid can light it up. I would say electric. 
it's like poetry in motion. Straight beast. He's a straight beast. What do you plan on bringing um, to Gonzaga when you get there? A winning attitude, leadership, and um, I feel like I'm a dynamic guard, so I feel like I can make plays for my teammates, um, make plays for myself when needed, and um, I'll just bring positive energy and just wanting to win. His dad promises there will be a lot of winning in Gonzaga's future with Dominic at the helm, including one win that the team hasn't been able to achieve yet. We actually uh, play that scenario out, you know, all the time when we're training. You know, you know, this one's for the ring for Gonzaga, bringing that thing home. And um, so it's going to happen, Gonzaga fans, whether it's this year or in the next five years, we bring in a championship in Spokane. No doubt about it. I'm putting that on the record. But it's not just about winning for the Harris clan. They have bigger goals for his time in Spokane. If he can utilize his talents to better others while he's in Spokane, I'm going to be extremely happy. Um, I want to visit a game at Spokane, and they said, man, you know, not only is Dominic a great play, uh, player, he's a great person. You know, and when they can tell me that, that he's making an impact there, is when it, I know it's all came together. For now, though, they're just allowed to be proud. Um. I'm overjoyed. Um, I'm happy. He's my baby, so. warms your heart, doesn't it? As was stated in the piece, Dominic is a phenomenal athlete. He had a dunk named number one on the Sports Center Top 10 just a few months ago. Not bad for a high school junior. Reporting in Anaheim, I'm Brenna Green from Two Sports.